All right, thanks for clicking my video, Fix It Tony here. We have our LS460, and we're gonna try something a little bit different today. We're actually doing oil change, and you can click on the video here. We're going to have that available to look at the results from the Valvoline uh, Restore and Protect. But today we're also going to use CRC's Intake Valve Turbo Cleaner and Turbo Cleaner. Basically, what happens on these direct injection engines is usually you have a port injector that sprays fuel onto your valve and keeps it clean. These particular engines have dual injection on the Lexus where you have the port, but you also have the direct injection. So you do still get buildup on the valves. And I'll show you right now, we're gonna do a zero to 60 time to show the degradation and performance of this car. This car was doing six second zero to 60s. And now, as you can see, a little bit more than that. So we have room for improvement here. We need to see what it looks like on the inside. So we're gonna pull the cover off. We're gonna pull a spark plug. We're gonna get in there with my scope. And you can see this in the description if you want one of these, but this can move around so we can see on the inside of the intake valves, what kind of buildup we have. And then we're going to use the CRC. We're gonna use two cans of this. This is a V8, it needs a little bit more, uh, a lot more valves, a 32 valve engine. So we're gonna use two cans of this and then we're gonna come back to it and take a look at the valves and see what the after results are. See if this is a snake oil or if this actually works. Most of the direct inje injection engines that don't have dual injection like the Hyundai's and some of the Chevy's, uh, the, you do have to clean these valves. If you don't keep them clean, you will see your performance go down and you will, it'll cause you issues in the future. But it's important to do this regularly, like 15, 20,000 miles. If you're waiting longer than that, you're going to have to do the mechanical clean where you have to actually remove the whole intake manifold and they're going to use walnut shells to blast inside those valves. And it's a lot more expensive, a lot more complicated. If you do it on a regular basis with a product like this, you won't have to, hopefully, not in theory, not have to do that. So let's go and get the cover off, get the spark plug out, and take a look inside that valve. So this engine has 200,000 miles on it, and the amount of carbon is pretty unacceptable. You can see here between the valves, the valve seat looks good. I was rotating the engine to try to get a better view what the inside the valve looked like. Uh, but it didn't look like there was a lot of build up there, which is a good thing. But this much carbon, of course, is a problem. To the lower right-hand corner, you can see the direct injector. Uh, that was fairly clean. The piston's dirty. The cross hatch looks good. The compression on this engine is impeccable, 160 per cylinder. It's just all this carbon. And if there's much, this much carbon in the combustion chamber, there's a lot of carbon that's built up in the, the piston ring area, especially the oil ring. And that can cause issues in the future. But um, as you can see, we have a lot of cleaning up to do here to get this cleared out and definitely performance robbing. So let's get this cleaned out. So as you can see, um, you know, I rotated the engine a couple of times. I really couldn't see the inside of the intake valves. The, I could see the stems. They look pretty clean. So our problem necessarily is not with uh, the intake. The intake is actually, the ports are actually keeping the inside of the valves pretty clean. You see a ton of carbon buildup. And here's the telltale sign that there's an issue with oil consumption, and that's the ashiness on the spark plug. So you see the ash that built up the whiteness, that's usually caused by, unfortunately, um, burning oil, and you can see the excess of carbon in there. Um, so the only two ways oil can get in there, we see the cross hatch is fantastic on this. So that isn't our problem, but that's why we use Valvoline Restore and Protect on this engine now, and we're already starting to see results is the rings are soft. So you put a nice hard bore, which is uh, a plasma coated, then you put the rings and the pistons, and you can see these are hypertonistic, hyper high compression pistons on this engine. You can see the carbon line along the edge usually means that oil ring is kind of stuck, and that carbon you see on the pistons also in those rings. So the only way to get rid of that is one, run a cleaner through it, which we're doing, uh, through the intake, which will clean inside the valves, but also clean the combustion chamber. The second part is using the Valvoline Restore and Protect. It's gonna take a few oil changes to get the oil up there, dislodge all that built up carbon and get those rings to stop sticking because sticky rings will eventually lead to bigger problems. So now that we kind of seen what was going on, we can go ahead and reinstall the uh, spark plug. We're gonna run the, uh, the product through here, two cans of this, and then we'll go pull the 
uh, spark plug back out and take a look. We will replace the spark plug if you do something like this. You do have to replace the spark plug if you do uh, remove it just because these do have crush um, washers on them and they're really only one use once you crush them once. I'm going to use them one more time to put this back in before I remove it again but we're putting a brand new spark plug after that because we don't want to have issues with that. So we'll go ahead and reassemble this enough to go ahead and run the uh, the uh, cleaner through it. The way we're going to do it is we're going to run through one of the oil ports here for the PVC valve. We'll run it in there and you can see that will drop it right into the intake here and then it'll suck it in through the uh, through the intake and into the valves. As you can see also from inside the intake, it's really clean. Like besides a little bit of oil getting past the PVC, which is completely normal for every engine unless you have a catch can, even with a catch can it still happens. Um, everything looks pretty dang clean. Inside the engine looks clean, that looks clean. The problem is fueling and it's a common problem with the direct injection engines. Also, we live in California and the fuel out here with all the ethanol and all the additives, it, it just leaves the carbon, unfortunately, over time. It, it's supposed to be a cleaner fuel, but I have yet to see any evidence that it burns any cleaner except that it uses more of it because of the alcohol content, which has less BTU stored energy than standard gasoline in other states. So not to get in a theological <laughs> conversation about that, but um, let's go ahead and put this back together and let's run the uh, run the product through and see what we got. All right, so we temporarily put her back together so we can go ahead and run this product through. This is optional. It's something I do to my cars because I do this on a regular basis to some cars. Is I'll go ahead and drill a hole, and I'll use some Scotch 33 just to tighten the hole when I put the straw through, and then I'll I'll put a plug on this hole between services. So if I'm servicing it every oil change, now I can just plug that in there, squirt that in there, run it for a little while, get the oil oil nice and hot, change the oil everything's great i don't have to disassemble this thing or try to pipe it in through one of these hoses and then we'll just keep that plugged when we're not using it so a little cheat code if you guys want to use it not necessary something i do just to get a straight shot in that intake and also to ease the use of the product so we'll get started all right so i got the can set up engine running warmed up make sure you don't do this white engine the cold let it warm up let it hot heat soak a little bit get a helper inside Hold it to about 3,500, 3,000 RPM. And then we're gonna run one can in, we'll run the second can in. It's gonna get kind of loud here, so we'll move on to the completion of this. All right, so a couple of little notes. Um, after you do this, good to go run the car. I took it out, did a couple of hard launches with it. Whatever might be still in the intake, because this thing has a humongous intake, and most new cars do have what's called dual uh, length intakes there's a butterfly valve in there which we saw in the previous video that sometimes when you spray this stuff in that stuff will collect in different parts like you saw the oil is collecting in this intake so to run it hard a few times you're going to suck whatever residual might be in there through the engine because otherwise it's going to run like crap probably for a little bit so with that said we're going to let her cool down we're going to pull her back apart pull the spark plug and take a look at the results um, performance wise didn't notice a big difference acceleration except off the line it was more responsive, and that's objective, of course. The second thing I did notice is it idles smoother. You know, if anybody has these when you have the air conditioner off, it, you know, when they get higher miles, you tend to have a little bit of a, a shake to them. Uh, and it feels like it's under load when it's not, but I really think that comes down to the reduced flow of air and the carbon buildup in the uh, cylinders that's causing that problem. So noticed right away when I brought it back, when I came to a stop and I had the air conditioner off, the idle, not only was our RPMs a little bit higher than they used to be, because for some reason this thing used to idle like 450, 500 when the air conditioner was off and about 700 with the air conditioner on. Now it idles about 550, 600 without the air conditioner and still about 7, 750 with the air conditioner on. So definitely there is an increase in flow and the engine computer is adapting to it. So that's a big plus. That tells me that something, something happened. Uh, we got a lot of smoke blowing out the tailpipe of this thing when we were pushing those two cans through. Two cans is a lot. Maybe next time I do this, if I do two cans, I might separate it by a few days because that's a lot of load on a catalytic converter and you can really uh, run a risk of blowing the catalytic converter out. Especially on Toyotas, they are very expensive. They are probably one of the best on the market though at being able to survive something like this. GM cars generally don't do as well and Hyundai don't do well at all neither do Nissan. So word of the wise going forward, probably 
would not do two cans in one r one rush. Also, there's a V8. That's why we use two cans. We've got four cylinder. Use one can at a time. Probably every oil change. As preventative maintenance, if you're using it to clean it out, I would probably do it twice uh, between oil changes. So during oil change and probably between an oil change, run it through. You can do what I did and I put a little cap right there, so you can just run it through without having to disassemble everything. And you know, right now it's just a piece of tape, but I'm gonna have a plug for that, and then we'll use the plug when we're not you know when we don't need a spray in there that way it's easy to access you got a direct shot into the intake and we could run it through it and keep this engine clean it has 200,000 miles on it we want to get 500,000 out of it and keeping it clean is half the battle so we'll let her cool down we'll come back to it pull the plug and see where we're at wow look at these results um you can almost see the metal now through the carbon at the top of the combustion chamber is pretty much all cleared out there's still a little bit left. The direct injector has a clean shot now. It, this did a great job compared to what we looked like before. The cross hatch looks good. The area at the top where it was really built up, it really, really came clean. And you can see that that valve is almost clean itself too. Well, I could tell you, you can see the before and after. Wow, what a difference. Um, this stuff does work. Uh, CRC, it it cleaned it out pretty dang good. I mean, it has some more work, but I think, again, by drilling that hole, we'll do it every oil change. Over time, the rest of that crud, we're going to get it out of there. Two cans really did a nice job. Uh, a lot of the carbon's gone, especially at the top of the piston crown of where the head is. You can see it, that was pretty much all gone. Um, have to recommend it. it. It does work. But again, preventive maintenance it would work better if somebody had been doing that from the beginning with this car or even with any direct injection engine you get a new car buy this stuff use it regularly it does work if you wait till it gets out of control you're going to have to have the almond blasting done probably first and then use this as a as a way to keep it clean it's about twenty dollars a can the almond blasting can range from eight hundred to fifteen hundred dollars to have done so big difference in price and this will keep it clean between oil changes instead of waiting until it gets absolutely terrible and having the decrease in performance um mostly idle quality because again i did do the performance on this and i really didn't notice a big difference in performance throttle off the off the line was definitely better idle is definitely better performance not so much but you never know we'll we'll run this a few times maybe it changes as the computer starts adapting to the fact that the you know that's not filthy dirty also, we're going to keep on running fuel injector cleaner through here to really make sure this system's cleaned out and we're, you know, not to a point where it has so much carbon building up. And on top of that, we're running the uh, Valvoline Restore and Protect to clean out those rings because the cleaner the rings get, the less consumption oil we're going to have because those rings will start to release. And I think cleaning not only the top end of the cylinder head, but cleaning the, the rings through the oil will also double whammy. We'll get this clean. So... Please like, subscribe if you like what you see. You want to see more, please comment about it. I will respond to all your comments and all your suggestions. We're going to do more projects here. We've got more vehicles coming into the, the my at-home shop here. And happy to give you guys advice and show you how this stuff works so you're not out there wasting your money on snake oil. So again, thanks again for watching. Have a great day. See you next time.